Uh, Saad Yusuf, The Athletic. Pete, when you kind of look at the the way that you guys have responded these last two games, would you say this is, uh, we've talked so much about you guys being a response team. Was this the toughest circumstances you guys had to respond for, what Game 4 presented? Yeah. Well, I, I don't think a 3-0 three, three hole it can get any tougher. It doesn't get any tougher, and you're still allowed to play. So uh, by, by far the most adversity we've had, back-to-back uh, -back elimination games, uh, obviously on the road, uh, our first elimination game on the road that we've had, um, I think, right? Yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I would say uh, probably the, the most adversity we've faced. But, you know, we, uh, we're starting to feel comfortable in those situations, so that's a good thing. Um, when you look at the lineup now, uh, Jamie coming back, is this one of those good problems to have? How do you, how do you view who comes out in this situation? Yeah. Well, it's a good problem to have. You know, your captain's coming back in the lineup. Guys have battled their ass off to, to give him a chance to play again, uh, which he's going to tomorrow night. And we'll, we'll make those tough decisions tomorrow. Sometimes those decisions are made for you with injuries and things like that. Hey, Pete. Leah, Hi. someone called the Dallas Morning News. Um, so what have those conversations been like with Jamie over the past couple of days, him not being able to play? What are you saying yeah. to him, and what do you need from him tomorrow? Not, not much conversation. He's, he's, a, he's an angry bear walking around, <laughs> walking around waiting to play again. So I, I think he's on pins and needles. Uh, you know, he's been sitting with our video coaches watching the game. He's not, he's not a really good spectator. So uh, I think he'll be excited to play. And then kind of similar to Saad's question, you know, wh what do you say to whoever does get bumped from the lineup, especially after the game that your third and fourth line have? What, yeah. of, what is yeah. that conversation like? Well, I, I think, you know, Ty Delandria is a, a great example of that. Um, you know, we've relied on our depth all year, and guys have come in and out of the lineup, and they've accepted that. And when they've come in, they've given us everything they've got. Olson's a, a great example of that. Ty Delandry is a great example of that. And they also know, you know, we have a lot of depth here, um, and they're tough decisions to make. But you get to this time of year, um, it's all about what's best for the team, and guys are real professional with that. Those things. Taylor Baird, NHL.com. What? Does Jamie actually bring to your lineup in terms of skill sets that maybe you guys have been missing over the last two? Yeah. Well, I mean, just there's not many six foot three, 220 pound power forwards that can score and create room and have a physical and an offensive presence on the game. I mean, power play, all those things. So, um, you know, he's uh, he's a welcome addition back for us. And that's just the hockey piece. You know, the, the fact that he's in our dressing room and with our guys, the leadership piece is, uh, is another, you know, big, big part of it. Hey Pete, uh, Derek Van Deest, I, I believe you said that you eat an elephant a bite at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess just, I want to ask you about the importance of not looking ahead of Game 6 and, yeah. and knowing that you guys have an opportunity to do something that's never been done before, but you need to keep the picture smooth. Yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes human nature, there's a, there's a, a tendency to take a breath now uh you know because jamie's back and and we've gotten through that adversity uh and we can't do that you know now now you can see the finish line and we've got to make sure we take care of business and give ourselves a chance to cross it you guys have been playing from the edge of a cliff for the last you know two games yeah they're gonna they're creeping closer to that cliff yeah. now do you expect their kind of intensity and i do I, I do um you know i also think the pressure ramps up and we all handle pressure differently and that's a that's a big pressure to blow a, th a three nothing lead. Yeah. I also want to ask you just about the margins. They've been so small, three yeah. games going overtime, and it's just you get you're, you're starting to get bounces. Look like Jason's starting to get those bounces that yeah. he needed in the first couple of rounds. Well, he's a scorer, and uh, you know I think he's feeling it, and he is uh, uh, when when goal scorers feel it like that and they get on runs. Um, like I said, I, I've, I've talked about this. I mean, he went 25 games at the beginning of the season and. And scored every night. Uh, he's that type of player, and that's that's what I see right now. I see him in that type of groove. Uh, Bruce Cassidy was talking about how you guys have maybe tweaked your forecheck or whatever. Do you do you enjoy this kind of chess match that you kind of get into in a playoff <laughs> series where you you know you see this team so many times where you get to make these adjustments that you don't necessarily get to do in the regular season? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's my my favorite part of the, of the game is is dialing in on one team for a seven game series and and the the game to game adjustments uh, both with what's working and what isn't working. That's that's what makes playoffs great. So I think from a coaching perspective, it doesn't get any better than that. We're good. Uh, one, one more. Sorry. Uh, any updates on Dadnoff? Uh, no, he didn't travel with us. He he had some. Uh, um, uh, pictures and things done. He was seeing the doctor while we were gone, so I'll have an update more tomorrow. Okay, thank, thank you. you.